quite a joy today to be in uh, in my hometown with my good friend. Where is he? W w w w would you move that cue card? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't show up today, though. <laughs> he didn't show up. So you got me. <laughs> Ernie, good to have you, bud. Good to be with you again. And it's good to have a little extra time here. Yeah. You're really in town to uh, uh, to look at tombs. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything in the world I'd rather do than look at the possibility of songs. Yep. Now tell tell the folks how pure I am when you came to the concert in, in Canton, and I hadn't even thought of it. But intermission, you said. Yeah. How was it? You know, went to the dressing room. How's the sound? How you know? What do you think? I'm like everything's great except I've sat here an hour and a half and I have not heard one Gaither tune. I'm at a Gaither concert. No Gaither music. And when you told me that, I said, shame on me, because there are people who come from quite a distance to say, are you going to sing into your song? Except I do think that underscores a philosophy of approaching music and what we sing uh, that I've had from the very beginning. I love what we write, and I believe it's, I, I, I believe it's inspired, I believe it's good stuff. But the bottom line, when I get out there and sing to the people, or when I have other groups singing, singing to the people, I want to sing the very best songs that I think is going to fit. People are that you know it's going to glorify God, yeah. and it's going to meet the needs uh, of uh, of people. And one of the reasons is I've seen too many groups in the past just sing their songs because they wrote them, and yeah. I'm and I'm going. <laughs> so, oh, Jake, one night says. I hope they're done singing. I'm done listening. <laughs> That's a classic line. Is, is, is that a great line? Yeah. Well, you did. And then that second half, you sat down and, and uh, started singing. And before long, the whole crowd took it away from you and started singing along. So, I, And I did that because you, and I'm still doing that on the second half. I sit down on a stool and uh, sometimes I give you credit for it. <laughs> I say, my old buddy Ernie Haas came to a concert one night and said, you sang for a whole hour and didn't sing any of your songs. It's always good when everybody starts singing, uh, when the crowd takes a song from you. I was sick this last uh, December on a Christmas tour. Woke up just about once every two or three years, I'll get that bug. And, uh, so as, a, as an artist and a singer and a performer, you want to give your best every night. So I went on stage and I said, I'm going to give you what I got left. It's not much. And, uh, as a, in basketball terms, because you know we like to talk basketball, uh, there's no going to be no dunking. I don't even know if I can do a layup. I'm just going to pass the <laughs> ball around all night long. But towards the end of the program, I said, I've never ended a program without singing, Oh, what a Savior. So I just basically just spoke it. And before I got to the end of the course, they just took it and sang it. And I'm like, I'm not that important. <laughs> it never was about the notes. The trouble with the big songs is they're big and they require a big production. But I found on that second half, as big as a song like Center of uh, Saved by Grace is, uh -huh. I can just go, if I, you could see what I once was, if you could go with me and get the course go, I'm just a sinner, let us sing with you, Save by Grace. And we have sung it and the message got over without us having to scream. Interesting thing, 30, 40 years ago, I forget when, we were, uh, probably 50 years ago when we were on the first uh, Billy Graham crusade in Toronto and had sung Because He Lives because we'd just written it. Somewhere along there, Cliff Barrow said to me, uh, Dr. Graham was said at his funeral. Oh. And so I said, great, you know, well, he was, you know, 55, 60 or 65. I thought he could live, you know, a few more years yeah. at least, you know. <clears throat> and uh, so as it went on, they kept saying, we want you to sing a song. So when he passed away this past year, uh, they called and said, we want you to sing Because He Lives. And I said, well, great. But in the process, when I was talking to uh, a couple of the producers, they were a little concerned that we were going to sing it, I guess, with the track, which is really, really big. Yeah. And... Uh, so I finally called Tom Bledsoe, who was, who was in charge of it, and I said, 
Tom, are you having problems with this? He said, only with the production of it. I said, you want to just do it at the piano? Put it down a couple steps? Could you? Oh. And so we did, you know. But it is tough for a singer <coughs> that if they're expecting you to hit a B flat and a C on the end of Because He Lives, yeah. or The King Is Coming, or Oh, What a Savior. That's a, that's a serious problem. Yeah, but uh, I was with my brother and uh, it was his 50th birthday. We were in New York City, so I surprised him because he loves Billy Joe. And so we went to Madison Square Garden. The place was packed out. I think it was like his 98th sellout in a row. He plays it every month. And that same principle applies to all genres. I mean, halfway through the show, everybody was standing up singing. Piano man. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it on the... <laughs> they just, the crowd was singing. He just, they took the song away from him, you know? So um, I think at everybody's core, no matter what your genre of music that you like or yeah. whatever, even your spiritual beliefs, whatever stream you choose to believe, at the core, everybody's the same. We, we, want, we want to sing. We want to express what we feel inside. And so you've given a, you and Gloria have given a, the church through many years uh, a vehicle, an outlet, you know, to sing what's inside of them. If you've enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest content and check out the other great clips on the Gaither Music TV channel.